we can use weight maps in XSI to control different parameters and attributes and properties of objects. There are many different applications for weight maps and many different ways that you can use them. In this example, I'll show you one way that you can use weight maps to drive a push deform operator. So let's go ahead and look at an example of how to do that. From the main uh, toolbar here, in the model mode, I'll go to primitive, polygon mesh, and I'll pull up a simple sphere. Let's change some of the properties of this sphere around. So for the subdivisions in the U and V, I'll go ahead and increase that to 24 and 24, and that should be enough. Let's close the PPG. Okay, what I want to do is use a weight map to control the push deformation of this sphere. So we can paint deformation onto it using weight maps. How do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. With the sphere selected, I'll go to property, and then I'll go to weight map, which is right down here. Once you do that, a PPG for the weight map will appear. We can rename the weight map by clicking on rename. So we can say call this push map. Click OK. Now the weight map is called push map. The main reason for renaming these weight maps is because sometimes in a project you may have multiple weight maps on one object. By naming them certain ways, you can quickly identify them in the explorer and know which weight map you're painting on, which is obviously extremely important. We have some different options here for changing some of the values and things. We're going to keep it at constant, which is the default, but of course you can choose different options here to change the way that the weight map values are interpreted. Okay, well I'm going to leave all the other um, values at default, for now at least. Okay, let me close that PPG. I'm going to select the sphere again, and this time I'm going to go down here to the Modify menu. I'm going to go to the Deform button, and in the submenu that pops up, I'm going to go ahead and click on Push. So, click on Push, and now a Push Operator PPG window pops up. What I can do with this is I can connect the amplitude parameter of the push operator to the weight map. Before I connect it, however, if you notice when I change this amplitude parameter, the amplitude, when it's negative, pushes the sphere inward, so it collapses it on itself. When you go to positive values, it makes the sphere explode or push outward. If I wanted to control which area of the sphere is going to be pushed outward and pushed inward, I would have to connect the amplitude parameter to a weight map. So let's do that. Let's click on this little connection icon here and click on a connect uh, menu option there. XSI now needs to know which weight map you're going to connect to that parameter. So we'll expand polygon mesh here, expand clusters, and you'll see if we expand uh, weight map CLS, which stands for clusters, you'll see the push map right here that we created. This is why you want to name your maps. I named it push map. If I had several maps here, I could easily identify which is the map I want to connect. So click on push map and XSI automatically connects the amplitude parameter here, which is shown here with this little red icon. It's plugged into the push map, which is down here. Now what I can do is use the weight paint tools to go ahead and paint this. So, let's go ahead and do that. Let's use the W key to activate the weight paint mode. Use the middle mouse button by holding it in and then moving the mouse back and forth to change the radius of the paint tool. If you use the left mouse button, you can start the paint values onto this, uh, onto this sphere. As you can see, the values are shown with this kind of blue aqua color. And anywhere I paint, the object's going to be pushed. Now you can see that it's not being pushed now. That's because my amplitude right now is set to zero. So let's increase the amplitude to two. We can uh, increase that past two if you'd like to. In this case, I'll leave it at two, that's fine. And here we can see how we can start the paint deformation onto this object. In the main toolbar here, go down here and click on the second icon here, which looks like a paintbrush. That opens up the paint panel. We can use the paint panel to control the opacity and control different features of the paintbrush. So let's change the opacity from 100 to say um, 12%. And now you can paint in very small increments as you can see. 
I could paint a very subtle amount and control this a little bit better. If you hold down shift while you paint, it makes XSI smooth the paint values out, as you can see. So you can smooth this out. Pretty, pretty simple uh, to use. We can also change the weight value range down here. The minimum is set to zero, but we can go ahead and set the minimum to negative one. What this means is that now the minimum can go below zero. So we can actually paint negative values onto, um, onto this uh, sphere. With the right mouse button, we can go ahead and click. And now you notice that negative values are going to appear with the color red. So we can actually push parts of this sphere inward on itself. And we can control which parts are going to be pushed in by using the right mouse button. The left mouse button brings that right back out. You could quickly start to create interesting shapes. You can also use this on character faces, which are pretty high res, to change some things around and model with a little bit more freedom, artistic freedom. And hold shift to go ahead and smooth some of this in. Okay, so that's how to use the weight maps and connect them to different parameters to be able to control those parameters by using the paintbrush tools in XSI.